Hey family, it's about that time. It's about that time, y'all. I'm getting ready to make today and show you how to make a delicious red velvet cake pack from the box. I have videos on my uh, from scratch red velvet cake, but this one is going to be easy for those who don't like baking or really don't know how. Um, if you want to do one from scratch, I do have uh, my videos on um, YouTube, and so you can watch those. And, and if you're my uh, YouTube uh, sisters and brothers, I'll put a video right up here. So you'll be able to see my from scratch red velvet cake. So this cake is not going to be from scratch. And let me tell you everything that we're going to need. You're going to need a mixer. You can use a, a, a hand mixer but today I'm going to use my stand mixer you're going to need two boxes now the reason I am uh, using two boxes is because I'm going to make a three layer nine I'm going to use three nine inch pan and I'm going to save some of the batter over for some cupcakes but let's go over the directions on the back of these boxes first okay you will need, it says, one cup of water. Instead of one cup of water, I'm using one cup of buttermilk. Okay, now if you were going to make one box, this is how you would go by your instructions. But instead of using the water, use the one cup of buttermilk. But since I'm doing uh, two cake, two boxes, I'm going to use, that's when I go through the um, uh, the ingredients, just double them up for the two boxes. So I'm going to use two um, two cups of buttermilk. Buttermilk make cakes really good. For the eggs, uh, it says three eggs. So I'm going to use six eggs and I'm going to add one extra egg. So uh, you're going to use, if, if, even if you're making the one box, add an extra egg. So instead of having the three eggs, add one extra egg in here. Okay, now for your vegetable oil, you can supplement, you can um, swap out your vegetable oil for butter. But I have a lot of cakes to make, so I'm not going to use butter. I'm going to use, go ahead and use the vegetable oil. But if I didn't have a whole lot of cakes to make this week out, I would definitely use the one half cup of butter. Um, so these are the instructions that uh, for the cake. So we're going to use uh, two cups of um buttermilk we're going to use six seven i'm going to use seven eggs instead of eight eggs i'm going to use uh two uh, one cup of oil because it says one half cup so i'm making two boxes i'm, I'm going to use one cup of vegetable oil okay so we went over those instructions and i'm going to use one tablespoon of vanilla now this is a red velvet cake, so the cake mix is red. But I like my my red velvet cake. Uh, if you're gonna make it your own, I like my my cake to actually be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna use one bottle of red food color, and that's a one ounce bottle. Here's the buttermilk. We're gonna use one cup of buttermilk. Here's our eggs. I need to crack one more egg, and our oil. And I'm also gonna use two tablespoons of cocoa you can use any brand cocoa uh, that you want to use i always use the cocoa uh, because it's more natural and so i'm going to use the cocoa so i'm going to use two tablespoons of cocoa in this recipe even though this says that it's made with rich cocoa i want to add a little cocoa myself Okay, so now for our cream cheese frosting, we're going to use three boxes of cream cheese because I want to make sure that I have enough cream cheese for the uh, enough of uh, cream cheese frosting for uh, these three um, uh, cake um, cake pans. I have um, some powdered sugar here that I'm going to use. I'm going to use uh, over half of this bag, and this is a 32 ounce bag of a uh, cream of a uh, powdered sugar. So these are the things that I am going to use. And y'all, I'm not trying to be cheap when it comes to this oil and not substituting it with the butter, which is good to substitute with the butter. It's just that I have so, uh, I have a lot of cakes to make and I, I, I'm just not going to buy all that butter. So we're going to do that. But the, this, this buttermilk, oh, it's going to take it to the next level. So we're not going to worry about the butter, but the buttermilk is going to take that flavor up. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put my cake in, my cake uh, mix in and 
and with this cake you don't have to wait until everything is room temperature but i always sit my eggs and my buttermilk out for about an hour it's just me i still kind of let it you know kind of warm up just a little bit but you really don't have to this type of this box cake you can just dump everything in there but i still kind of wait and so what i'm going to do with my vanilla flavor y'all i'm going to mix my vanilla flavor in my buttermilk okay so let's go ahead and get started on this cake so we can take this cake to the stove now when i get ready to um uh, uh, when the cake is all ready, I'm going to let it cool and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator or in the freezer for about a couple of hours. And I want, I don't, it don't have to be froze, froze, but it needs to be cold. And I'm going to put them in there for a couple of hours and then we'll go ahead and put our uh, delicious icing and we'll be working on our icing. Okay. Y'all got that? Okay. Let's go ahead and get this delicious box hack red velvet cake going. Okay, y'all. We panning over the ingredients. Simple, 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 simple. I know you say, if you're going to use all that, why don't you go ahead and make your red velvet cake from scratch? Because I don't want to make it from scratch because this has just about everything you need in there. It has my, my flour. It has flavor. It has the cocoa. I'm just adding um, some of these things to accentuate the cake and the flavor, y'all. That's what I am doing. It's not really as much work. And I'm also going to show you how I do my um, German chocolate cake. So I'll be doing that next to show you all what I add to my German chocolate cake. And I have a big twist for that. And I'm telling you, it's foolproof. Okay, let's get this going. Okay, family, let's go ahead and add our uh, vanilla to this milk. So we got about a tablespoon full. Okay. And also let's go ahead and add our one bottle of food color. And this is like one, one ounce of food color. Let's get that all mixed up. Okay, we have that mixed up. And let's go ahead and add the cocoa. We have two tablespoons of cocoa. Cocoa, if you want to use Hershey's cocoa or whatever you want to use, we're going to go ahead and drop that in right now. Now, what I'm going to do, you all, I'm going to go ahead and start adding my eggs in here and my oil and my milk. So I'm going to turn the sound down, y'all, because this thing sounds like a locomotive train. I, I hate these uh, this brand of the KitchenAid. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get started, okay? Okay, y'all, scrape your bowl down. Scrape it down. Let me tell you what I don't like about these new um, KitchenAid mixers. And if you have one, let me know uh, how you feel about them. Is that on the old model, the, uh, the top part, the head, you can raise it back. You can raise this back, and when you raise this back, then it's open up this for you to scrape down. Now, the only way you can properly scrape this down, really, is take the mixer out. But uh, who wants to do that? So you have to kind of go around and just do the best you can. And plus, y'all, this mixer makes a ton of noise. Sound like a locomotive train. Okay. back up and let this mix.
Y'all, my pans have been greased. I'm going to add a little flour to each one. I'm old school, y'all, when it comes to baking cakes. And I also, I used a butter flavored spray, but one or two times that spray failed me. So I don't take, <laughs> I don't take any chances. So I just go old school. So I use some butter flavored Crisco. And this lasts for, I don't know how long. I've been baking cakes off of this for a long, long time. And I just take a paper towel and I uh, just take a paper towel, put a little uh, Crisco, and I just go around each pan and this will ensure me that my cakes are going to come out so let's put a little uh flour in each one of these pans okay 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 i put that flour in there and what i do to get it around the edges i just roll it around roll the pan around and ensure that I get this flour around the edges. And if you have a cake pan with different designs and crevices, just uh, make sure that you get this down in there. Just like this. Then I hit, hit it down for the extra. My pan is ready. Let's get it. This. And put it, you know, make sure you have it on the paper towel so you won't make a mess. That's the way I roll, y'all. Let me finish the other one. Okay. Okay, y'all. Now, this bowl is very he he uh, heavy, so I don't pour, I dip. Okay, let's go ahead and start dipping in our pans. And these pans are going to take about... Mm, I would say about three cups each. And this is a cup measuring cup here. Okay. Okay, remember, I'm going to make some cupcakes for the kiddos. Okay, family, our cakes are ready to go in the oven. They're going in temperature 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. So we're going to, and we're going to take them out, let them cool, and I'm going to put them in the freezer so I can um, ice them real well. Sometimes I, when I do cakes, I put them in the freezer and take them out, or I'll go ahead and do all my baking, all of my cakes, put the layers in the refrigerator, and just take them out as I uh, need them to uh, put the icing on it. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and just let them stay in there hours and um but if i wasn't doing a tutorial on on cakes i would bake all of my cakes and put all of the layers in the freezer and that's how um um real bakers do and you know in baker bakeries they don't bake their cakes and then turn around and ice them they bake them get them in the freezer and they uh ice them as they need them but these are going in the freezer for a little while y'all so i'm going to come back and show you how i make my cream cheese frosting from scratch Always, whenever you're baking these cakes and you want them to taste like the original, uh, um, not store-bought, but from scratch cakes, always make your um, your icing from scratch. I'm going to do my uh, um, German chocolate cake. I'm making my icing from scratch, and that's what gives these cakes a unique uh, taste and, and flavor like the original scratch cakes because you're making the icing from scratch. Okay, let's get these cakes in the oven, y'all. Okay, family, our cakes are out of the oven. I have them cooling. And y'all, a change of plans. You know, I said I was going to put them in the freezer and let them freeze. I really like to let them freeze overnight. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, um, I'm going to go ahead and get these cakes, I get these cakes iced. So what I'm going to do is just let them cool real good. And then I'll go ahead and put a crumb coat on and put it in the refrigerator. And then we can uh, go ahead and finish these cakes up. But we're going to let these cool. They came out well. And um, this is going to be a delicious red velvet cake. So let's go ahead and let these cakes get cool. Okay, family, we're getting ready to make our... um. Okay, family, we're getting ready to make our cream cheese, butter cream cheese frosting. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to put our butter in and let this kind of whip up some. Oh, we're going to need butter. This is two sticks of, of um, cold butter, not frozen butter, but it needs to be kind of cold, not really room temperature. And we have five cups of powdered sugar. One teaspoon of vanilla flavor. Now, you can add maybe a teaspoon or two of um, 
mm, milk if you like but I'm gonna see how uh, this is gonna mix up together but uh, if you need to add a little milk you can but this is what we're going to need the vanilla flavor so let's go ahead and get this party started okay so the first thing that we're gonna do is go in with our butter and you don't want real soft butter you want you know maybe sit it out for a few minutes you know don't let it just get real soft not to make this cream cheese frosting oh no it won't work so let's go ahead and get this going okay let's go ahead and push this down some y'all Okay, y'all, I told you we have five cups of whipped, I'm sorry, five cups of sugar. And I did want to put the sugar in there while the mixer was gone. So we're going to incorporate five cups of sugar in here. Okay, y'all, since I don't have a shield, I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, dishcloth over this so this powder sugar won't go everywhere. So let's start off slow. Okay, y'all, this is the consistency that we want our uh, powdered sugar and butter. So let's go in with about a teaspoon of vanilla wafer. <laughs> vanilla, y'all hear me vanilla wafer? No, vanilla. Okay, y'all, we're going in with three boxes of cream cheese. So I'm going to kind of break this cream cheese up and I'm going to add it in. But I didn't want to put the cream cheese in with the sugar and butter to start because sometimes when cream cheese is at room temperature, it will turn liquidy. And I don't want that. So you want your cream cheese still cold. So let's go ahead and start adding it in this mixer. Okay, y'all, I'm transferring my uh, buttercream cream cheese frosting to this bowl. This bowl has been in the refrigerator, so it's cool. And this is the consistency you want your cream cheese, just like that. Just like that. And once you um, uh, beat your sugar and your butter together, then when that's smooth, you go ahead and add your um cream cheese in there because your cream cheese do not need to beat a long time if it beat a long time you're going to have something that's not really spreadable and or you want it when you finish you want it to be this but if you beat cream cheese a long time you won't have this you want this stiffness you want this smoothness you don't want it when you dip down in there and it runs off your spoon you don't want it to run off your spoon so once you get everything smoothed out then put your cream cheese in there last and beat it for no longer than two or three minutes and it's ready okay so i'm transferring this now okay y'all let's go ahead and put a little icing down here in the middle so it'll kind of hold the uh the first piece of cake down Let's go ahead and get this ice and spread it on this cake. Y'all, this ice smells so good. And we're going to spread it all the way to the end. And this icing is what's going to make your cake homemade. Tastes like homemade. Okay. Everybody has different uh, methods of putting icing on their cake. This is mine. Okay. I like 
to spread it to the end. Okay. Like so. This layer down. I just like to mash them down just a little bit, y'all. Yeah, but this is that. When I do my German chocolate cake, I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to make my icing. Yeah, I know it's simple to just go ahead and not be bothered with the trouble and, and buy you um your icing already made. But this is what put that touch on it. And people are not going to know that this cake is not homemade. They're not going to know it, y'all. I'm not going to tell anybody. You're going to tell. Make sure it's. This icing is really stiff, and that's the way you want it. You want it stiff. You don't want it running. You don't want it. Um, If you overbeat this uh, frosting, it will be running and not spreadable. Okay. We're going to get this icing to the end. Like right, so. Going on with my last layer. And I just sort of press down a little bit on this. And if your cake slides, just go ahead and put it right back in place. Because that's okay. Okay, y'all. What this is, a couple of my cakes had a dome over them. That means the cake rolls up and it rolls up into a dome. And, um... This is right. This is what I use this for. It's when it does that, I can just go across it, the cake, in the cake pan, and do like this, go all the way across, and what it's going to do, it's going to even your cake out. But if you don't have one of these, go ahead and just use your knife. Now, I had these crumbs left. What I'm going to do with them, I'm going to use them on the cake. So I just take my hand, and I crumble these up real fine, and I'm going to use these on the cake also. We're not throwing away anything, y'all. Okay, y'all, I have our crumbles ready. And don't ever, whenever you have to uh, shave the top of your cake, don't ever throw that away. Always use it on your cake. So we're going to use this on the cake. And this is the consistency I like. Also, y'all. Okay, y'all, our cake is ready, so let's go ahead and um, start putting crumbs, oh, I'm sorry, y'all, let's go ahead and start putting crumbs on it. So, let me tell you what this is. When you get your last crumb coat on, you just take this and just scrape it around the cake. It put little indentions in the cake. As you can see, this, this is not a perfect cake, but this is... um delicious cake and and that makes it delicious um i'm not going to do all that decorating to the cake i'm just going to put a few things on there and the cake is done so, okay let's go ahead and start applying our crumbs i put some aluminum foil i'm sorry um paper towel down and we're going to use these crumbs down to do when you have a build up when I have a build up I just go ahead and push it back down and finish okay y'all we got our crumbs on there so yeah don't throw those crumbs away and I'm just pushing them down to the side 
I mean pushing them down on the edge of the cake like so and those crumbs come in handy okay let me wash my hands yep. Okay, y'all, I have some pecans here, and I've taken those and uh, crushed those up. And so we're going to use some pecans on the top of this cake. Okay, family, we are done with our red velvet cake. I am going to cut a slice so you can see how it looks on the inside. So you see how I utilize those crumbs. I just put them on the cake and I put nuts on top of it. Very simple cake, very easy to make. That icing is going to make this cake taste absolutely delicious. So you can take your box cakes and make them out of something magnificent and beautiful, y'all. So... I put this cake and I'll show you um, how the cake looks when I touch, when I cut it. But um, the frosting is what make these box cakes taste good. So if you decide to do this cake, just go ahead and get you some cream cheese and make you a cream cheese frosting. And um, uh, you will be happy to, uh, uh, you will be proud of this cake when you do that cream cheese frosting. So it is homemade, huh? The cream cheese frosting is, uh, is homemade. So let's get ready to uh, cut this cake. And I'm going to just take this paper towel and throw it away. And also I'm going to take this um, cake round and I'm going to go ahead and put it in a cake um, display and um, then we'll be ready to cut it. I like these cake rounds here y'all because when you get ready to move the cake it is so easy to slide this under your hand. So okay let's go ahead and get ready to cut. Okay, family, we are done with our box cake hack, our red velvet cake, and I think it came out really nice. Now, most red, vel red velvet cakes, box cakes, they um they have a lighter color um uh, cake mix. It's kind of light, but we added a bottle of red food coloring, and that's the reason that this is so deep and dark. Okay, y'all, this is our cake. I thank y'all. Thank you. Okay, family, we are done with our red velvet cake. I appreciate you all watching this video through its entirety. I really do appreciate y'all. So, do you see the difference in the box red velvet cake? Because sometimes that cake, the cake mix is not light. So, you have a lighter cake mix. So, I wanted a darker cake mix because the red velvet cakes that you uh, make from scratch or whatever, they are darker. And then, plus, you add that cocoa in it. So, that's where the red velvet gets its color from the cocoa and um the the food color and what happens the food the uh if you put in, in the regular case you add a little vinegar and that vinegar kind of enhances that that red food color okay so this is our cake y'all do me a favor be good to yourself and if you be good to yourself you have no other choice but to be good to others God, we want to thank you and praise you for the provisions that you have given me to make this delicious red velvet cake for the MTS crew. Bless everyone that has watched this video. And I thank y'all for, for, for hanging with me and rocking with me. Y'all are so appreciative. So, appreciate it. So, uh, the next cake I'm going to make is a, a German chocolate cake. And I'm going to make the cake frosting from scratch. I'm going to make the pecan frosting from scratch. And we're just going to do a red... Um, um, German chocolate cake. Then after that, I'll do my um, church lady cake, which I invented that recipe for that cake uh, with the help of a box cake. Okay, so uh, let's let's have fun today. Enjoy yourself, and um, I appreciate y'all. This cake is delicious. Let's go ahead and take a bite. No, I can't get it. 
Mm-mm. Y'all? Mm-mm. I'm going to tell you something. You all cannot tell that this isn't a homemade red velvet cake. Enjoy, y'all. God bless.